Chapters 43 through 50 of the Book of Genesis from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Genesis, chapters 43 through 50. Chapter 43 but the famine oppressed the country, and it arrived that when all the food they had bought from the Mitzrayim ended, that their father said to them, Return and buy us a little food. When Judah replied to him, saying, The man swore to us, asseverating, You shall never see my face unless your brother is with you. If you are wise enough to send our brother with us, we will return and buy food for you to eat. But if you will not send, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel, however, answered, Why did you wrong me by telling the man that there was another brother to you? And they responded, The man demanded of us about our birthplace, asking, Have you a father living? Have you a brother? And we told him straightforwardly about those things. How could we know he would say, Bring your brother down with you? Then Judah exclaimed to Israel, send the lad with me and i will come up and return him alive and if not kill me myself as well as my children i pledge myself for him from my hand seek him if i do not bring him back to you then banish me from your face for i shall have sinned against you all my days if you had not hesitated we should already have returned before now therefore israel their father said to him if it must be do this Take some of the productions of this country in your wagons, and go down to the man with a present, some balsam and honey, perfumes and myrrh, nuts and almonds. Also take double money in your hands, and the money that was returned in the mouth of your bags, return with your own hands to him again. Take your brother also, and arise, go back to the man and may the almighty god give you mercy before the man and send your brother back with benjamin for if i am to be bereaved i shall be bereaved consequently the men took the present and took double money in their hands and benjamin and arose and went to mitzrayim and appeared before joseph and joseph saw benjamin with them and said to the chief of his house invite those men to my house and prepare a dinner for those men shall eat with me at noon the man therefore did as joseph ordered and he brought the men to joseph's house but the men were afraid at being brought to joseph's house and said it is on account of the money which was returned to our bags last time that we are brought to have an excuse against us and to fall upon us and to take us for his slaves with our asses therefore they approached the steward of joseph's house and spoke with him in the veranda of the house and said by the ever-living we came down for the purpose of buying food but when we returned to the inn and opened our bags there was our money in the mouth of our bags in full amount but we have returned with it in our hands we have also brought other money with us to buy food we knew not that our money was there in our loads but he answered be quiet and fear nothing your god and the god of your father has given you that money secretly into your loads come with me then he brought simeon to them the man the steward of joseph's house also went out and ordered water and they washed their feet then he ordered fodder for their asses they then prepared the present against joseph's arrival at noon for they heard they were to dine with him when joseph came to the apartment they presented him the present which they had brought from home and bowed to the ground before him then he asked them about their health and said is your father well the old man you told me of is he alive yet and they replied your slaves are well and our father is yet alive and bent and bowed but he raised his eyes and saw benjamin his brother the son of his mother and asked is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me then he added god show you mercy my son then joseph hastened for his affection burned for his brother and he sought to weep so he went into his chamber and wept there but afterwards he washed his face and came again and restrained himself and ordered dinner to be served they therefore served it for him by himself and to them apart by themselves for the mitzorites dined by themselves for the mitzorites are not allowed to eat food with foreigners for that is disgusting to the mitzorites 
but they placed in his presence the eldest according to his age and youngest according to his youth and arranged the men each by his relative and they took dishes from before him to offer to them but they offered to benjamin more dishes than to any of the rest presenting five which they presented and left with him chapter forty four afterwards he commanded his steward saying fill the loads of these men with food as much as they are able to carry and put the money of each on the top of the carts and my cup the cup of silver place at the top of the load of the youngest with the money for his corn so they did as joseph ordered at morning light the men went off with their asses when they had gone not far from the city joseph said to his steward mount and follow those men secure them and say to them why have you returned evil for good where is that my lord drinks from he is very sharp-sighted he saw what you were doing so he pursued and said this to them but they replied why has my lord spoken these words accusing your servants of having done such a thing you know we returned to you from the land of canaan the money which we found in the top of our loads we have not stolen silver or gold from the house of your lord if it is found with any of your servants kill him and we also will be slaves to my lord and he replied it shall be as you say therefore with whoever of you it is he shall be my slave and you shall be innocent then they hastened and each one unloaded his load and he searched beginning at the eldest to the youngest and found the cup in benjamin's load then they tore their garments and mounted each man his ass and returned to the city when judah and his brothers came to joseph's house and were again brought in they fell on their faces to the ground while joseph said to them how has this occurred that you have committed did you not know that i observe what happens around me then judah replied what can i say to my lord what assert or how vindicate myself god has found out the sin of your slaves in their hands alas we are slaves to my lord both we and the one in whose hand the cup was found but he answered and said far be it from me to act thus the one in whose possession the cup was found he shall be a slave to me but you can go in peace to your father then judah approached him and said to me my lord grant now for your slave to speak to the ears of my lord and let not your anger burn with your slave for you are to me like pharaoh my lord asked of his slaves saying have you a father or brother living and we replied to my lord a father lives with us an old man and a lad of his old age the youngest but his brother is dead and beside him there is none from his mother so his father loves him then you said to your slaves bring him to me that i may set my eyes on him but we replied to my lord the youth is not able to leave his father for if he leaves his father then he will die you however said to your slaves if you do not bring down your youngest brother with you you shall not again see my face and when we went up to your slave my father he was informed of the demand of my lord so that when our father said return and buy us a little food we replied we cannot go down unless our youngest brother is with us even should we descend we cannot see the face of the man unless our youngest brother is with us then your slave my father said to us you know that my wife bore me two lads and one went from me and i said alas he has been torn to pieces and i shall see him no more and if you take this one from my face and an accident should happen to him you will bring my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave so now if i should go to your slave my father and the youth is not with us whose life is bound to his life it will be then when he sees that the youth is not with us he will die and your slave will cause the gray hairs of your slave our father to go down in agony to the grave besides your slave pledged himself for the youth to my father saying if we do not bring him back to you then let me be banished from my father all my days so now i pray let your slave remain instead of the youth a slave to my lord and let the youth return with his brothers for if i go up to my father and the youth is not with me then i shall see the misery that will come upon my father chapter forty five then joseph was not able to restrain himself before all the officers around him and cried every man go out from me so not a man remained with him while joseph made himself known to his brothers then joseph discovered his language to his brothers and the mitzurites heard and it was reported to the house of pharaoh and joseph said to his brothers i am joseph 
does my father yet live but his brothers were not able to answer him for they were terrified at the sight of him joseph therefore said to his brothers come near to me so they approached when he said i really am joseph your brother whom you sold to go to mitzer and i know that with fury and rage in your eyes you sold me however god sent me before you to preserve life for these two years the famine has encircled the land and for five years more there will not be ploughing or harvest therefore god has sent me before you to preserve to you a posterity in the earth and a secure refuge for your lives consequently it was not you who sent me but god who appointed me as a father to pharaoh and an administrator of all his house and a governor for all the land of the mitzraim therefore arise and go up to my father and say to him your son joseph says thus god has appointed me as administrator of all the mitzraites so come down to me do not delay you shall reside in the land of goshen and be near to me you your children and your children's children with your sheep and your oxen and all that you have and i will provide for you there for there are five years of famine yet therefore come down yourself and your family and all that you have so that my eyes may see you and the eyes of my brother benjamin and that my mouth may also speak with you you must also inform my father of all my power among the mitzraim and all that you have seen and cause your father to mount and come down to here then he fell upon the necks of his brothers and wept and benjamin wept upon his neck he also kissed all his brothers and wept over them and afterwards his brothers conversed with him and a report was communicated to the palace of pharaoh saying joseph's brothers have come and it was good in the eyes of pharaoh and of his ministers pharaoh therefore said to joseph say to your brothers thus load up all of you from this city and go to the land of canaan and take your father and your families and come to me and i will give you the best of the land of the mitzraim and you shall be fed on the fat of the land you yourself also command this to be done take from the land of mitzer wagons for your little children and wives and your father and bring them care nothing also for the abandonment of your goods for the best of the land in mitzer shall be yours the sons of israel accordingly did so and joseph gave them wagons from pharaoh's arsenal and provided provisions for the journey he also gave all of them a suit of clothes but to benjamin he gave three hundred pounds and five suits of clothes to his father he sent in addition ten he riding asses the best in mitzer and ten she riding asses besides with bread and meat for his father on the way thus he sent off his brothers and said to them do not quarrel on the road they accordingly went from the mitzraim and ascended to the land of canaan to jacob their father and reported to him saying joseph is yet alive and he is also governor of all the land of the mitzraim then his heart failed for he could not believe them then they related all that joseph had said to them but when he saw the wagons which joseph had sent to carry himself then the spirit of jacob their father revived and israel said it is enough my son joseph does live i will go and see him before i die chapter forty six israel consequently marched and all that were with him and went to the well of the oath and offered offerings to the god of his father isaac then god appeared to israel in a vision at night and said jacob jacob and he replied i am here when he answered i am god the god of your father isaac fear not go down to the mitzraim for you shall become a great nation there i the mighty will be with you in mitzer and i will support you and joseph shall place his hands upon your eyes jacob afterwards arose from the well of the oath and the sons of israel carried jacob their father and their children and wives in the wagons which pharaoh had sent to carry them in they also took their herds and the property they had purchased in the land of canaan and went to the mitzraim jacob and all his race with him his sons and sons of his sons with him his daughters and his daughters sons and all his race went with him to the mitzraim now these are the names of the sons of israel who went to the mitzraim jacob and the eldest son of jacob reuben and the sons of reuben hanok and felwa and Hetzon and Carmi, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel and Jamin, and Ahad and Jachin, 
and Zokar, and Shaul ben Canaanith, and the sons of Levi, Gershan, Kohath, and Merari, and the sons of Judah, Ar, and Onan, and Shelach, and Perez, and Hetzion, and Hamal, and the sons of Issachar, Thola, and Phura, and Job, and Shimron, and the sons of Zebulun, Sered, and Alon, and Jaklal. These were children from Leah, which she bore to Jacob in Padan Aram, beside Dinah his daughter. And the persons of her sons and daughters were thirty-three. And the sons of Gad, Ziphion, and Hanai, Shenai, and Atzban, Arai, and Arodai, and Echali. And the sons of Asher were Jamna, and Ishna, and Ishur, and Berea, and Sirach his twin brother, and the sons of Beriah, Heber, and Malkiel. These were the children of Zilpha, whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and who bore them to Jacob, six and twenty persons. Sons of Rachel, wife of Jacob, were Joseph and Benjamin. But there were born to Joseph in the land of the Mitzrayim, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potipara, priest of On, bore, Manasseh and Ephraim. And the sons of Benjamin, Bela and Becher, and Ashbol, Gera, and Naaman, twins, and Rash with the twin Muphi, and twin Kufi, and Arad. These were the sons of Rachel, which she bore to Jacob, fourteen persons in all. And the son of Gad was Cushan. And the sons of Naphtali, Jachzel, and Gunai, and Jetzer, and Shilam. These were the children of Bela, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and she bore these to Jacob, in all seven persons. And the souls who went with Jacob to Mitzer, who sprung from his loins, being men only, sons of Jacob, all the persons were seventy. But the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Mitzer, were two persons, men. So all the persons of the family of Jacob who came down to Mitzer were seventy. But he sent Judah before himself to invite Joseph to meet him in Goshen, when he arrived in the land of Goshen. Joseph accordingly at once mounted his chariot and went to meet Israel his father in Goshen, whom he looked at and fell upon his neck and wept on his neck for a long time. And Israel said to Joseph, Let me die at once, after I have seen your face. Why should I live longer? Joseph afterwards said to his brothers and to the family of his father, I will go and inform Pharaoh, and tell him that my brothers and the family of my father who were in the land of Canaan have come to me, and that the men feed sheep. They have lived with people of the fold, and their sheep and cattle and all that they have they have brought. But it must be that when Pharaoh calls you and inquires, What can you do? You must say, Your slaves have lived as cattlemen from their youth until now, both we and our fathers. Grant us to settle in the land of Goshen. For the Mitzurites hate every shepherd of sheep. Chapter 47 Joseph accordingly went and reported to Pharaoh, and said, My father and brothers, and their sheep and cattle, and all that they have, are come from the land of Canaan, and are in the land of Goshen. Then he selected five from his brothers to take and present to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asked his brothers, What is your business? When they replied to Pharaoh, your slaves are shepherds of sheep, as we are, so were our fathers. They also said to Pharaoh, We have come to reside in the land, for there is no pasture for your slaves' sheep, because the famine is heavy in the land of Canaan. So allow your slaves to live in the land of Goshen. Pharaoh therefore in reply said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of the Mitzrayim is before you, so fix your father and brothers in the best of it. Let them settle in the land of Goshen, and if you know also a skillful man amongst them, appoint him superintendent of my farms. Joseph afterwards took Jacob his father and presented him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? When Jacob replied to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my stay have been one hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have been the years of the days of my life, and they have not reached to the days of the years my fathers lived in the days of their stay. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and retired from the presence of Pharaoh. 
Joseph afterwards settled his father and his brothers, and gave them possession in the land of the Mitzrayim, in the best district of the country of Ramses, as he was commanded. Joseph also provided food for his father and brothers, and all their families, according to their children. Bread failed in all the country, for the famine was very severe, and the land of the Mitzrayim and the land of Canaan fainted before the famine. Therefore Joseph gathered up all the money he found in the land of Mitzer and in the land of Canaan, and all the Mitzrites came to Joseph for the corn which they bought, and Joseph brought the money to the treasury of Pharaoh. Thus he collected the money from the land of Mitzrayim and the land of Canaan. Then all the Mitzrites came to Joseph to say, Provide bread for us, so that we may not die before you, for our money is exhausted. Joseph, however, answered them, Bring your cattle, and I will give you it for your cattle instead of for money. Consequently they brought their cattle to Joseph, and he gave them bread, for horses and cattle and sheep. For herds of oxen and asses he supplied them with bread in exchange for all their cattle for that year. But that year ended, so they came to him in the next year and said to him, we have kept back nothing from my lord we have nothing left before my lord except our bodies and our land why should we ourselves die before your eyes buy to yourself our land for bread and we and our land will be slaves to pharaoh thus the mitzrites sold every one his farm for the famine was cruel upon them and the land became pharaoh's but he transferred the people upon it to fresh villages, from the one extreme boundary of Mitzer to the other extreme of it, except that he did not buy the lands of the priesthood, for he protected the priesthood by laws from Pharaoh, and they were fed from rations provided for them, therefore he did not buy their lands. Then Joseph proclaimed to the nation, You see, I have bought you today and your land for Pharaoh. I will supply seed to you, and you can sow the land but of its produce you shall give one-fifth to Pharaoh, and four-fifths shall be for yourselves, to sow the fields and to feed you with those you employ, and as food for your children. They thereupon replied, Our lives have found favor in the eyes of my lord, and we will be slaves of Pharaoh. So Joseph made it the constitution to this day, that the land of the Mitzrites was Pharaoh's for the fifth tax, except the lands of the priesthood, which were not to become Pharaoh's. Joseph also settled Israel in the land of the Mitzrayim in the district of Goshen, and they possessed there and flourished and increased greatly. Jacob, however, lived seventeen years in the land of the Mitzrayim, and all the days of the years of Jacob were one hundred and forty-seven years. But the day approached for Israel to die, and he called his son Joseph to him and said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand under my thigh and do to me a true kindness and bury me not among the mitzrayim but lay me to sleep with my fathers and carry me from mitzer and bury me in their burial place and he replied i will do as you have said but he answered swear to me and israel was reclining on the surface of his bed Chapter 48 But it was after these events that it was reported to Joseph, Your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him, and Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you. Then Israel exerted himself and sat up in his bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, The Almighty God appeared to me on my departure from the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said to me, I will make you flourish, and increase your family, and make you an assembly of nations, and I will give this land to your race after you as a possession forever. But now for your two sons, who have been born to you in the land of the Mitzrayim before I came to you in Mitzar, let then Ephraim and Manasseh be mine, as Reuben and Simeon are mine. But your children whom you have begot after them, they shall be yours. They shall not be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. When I came from Padan, Rachel died from me in the land of Canaan, on the journey, in Kebrath Arts, near the pass of Ephratha, and I buried her by the road at Ephratha. Then Israel looked at the sons of Joseph, and said, these are mine. 
But Joseph said to his father, They are the sons which God gave me here. He, however, replied, I will take them now for myself and bless them. But the eyes of Israel were heavy from age. He was not able to distinguish, so he drew them to him and kissed them and embraced them. Afterwards Israel said to Joseph, I have seen your face unexpectedly, and now God has shown me also your heirs. Then Joseph brought them for his blessing, and they bowed before his face earthward. Then Joseph took both of them, Ephraim in his right hand for the left hand of Israel, and Manasseh in his left for the right hand of Israel, and approached him. But Israel stretched out his right hand and placed it upon the head of Ephraim, who was youngest, and his left hand upon the head of Manasseh intentionally, although Manasseh was the eldest. Then he blessed Joseph, and said, The God in the presence of whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who appeared to me from of old until this day, the messenger who redeemed me from all misfortune, bless the lads and give them my power the power of my fathers abraham and isaac and pour out their increase to the bounds of the earth joseph then discovered that his father had placed his right hand on the head of ephraim and it was unpleasing in his eyes so he took hold of his father's hand to change it from off the head of ephraim to the head of manasseh joseph also said to his father not thus my father for this is the eldest place your right hand on his head but his father refused saying i knew it my son i knew it he also shall be a nation and he also shall be great but nevertheless his younger brother shall be greater than he and his race shall be a multitude of nations and when blessing in that period they shall say the blessing of israel be upon you May God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh, and they will place Ephraim above Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I shall die, but God will be with you and will return you to the land of your fathers. Therefore I give to you Shechem alone, above your brothers, which I took to me by my hand, from the Amorites, by my sword and my bow. Chapter 49 Jacob afterwards called his sons and said, Assemble, and I will inform you what will befall you in future times. Collect and listen, sons of Jacob. Yes, listen to your father Israel. Reuben, the first of my vigor, you are the crown of my passion, excelling in beauty, excelling in strength boiling like water you lost command for mounting your father's bed yes defiling my honor's abode simeon and levi are brothers cruel weapons are hidden with them to their plottings go not my soul for honor join not their clan for they murdered guiltless men and joyfully murdered a prince curse their crime as great and their transgression for it sorely troubled jacob and israel shamed judah you shall direct your brothers your hand shall be on the neck of your foes to you shall the sons of your father bow a young lion judah for plunder my son springs from his couch like a lion and as a lioness who dare rouse him the scepter shall not depart from judah or the giver of law from between his feet till peace arrive and the nations obey him bound to the vine like an ass and a colt the son of a stepper he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of clusters his eyes shall be bright as grapes and his teeth be white as milk let zebulun dwell on the shore of the sea on the shore of the ships and extend his legs to the fishery a strong ass issachar lies in the stall and he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant 
so he gives his back to the load and becomes a servant for hire dan shall govern his people as a sceptred prince of israel dan is a snake in the path an adder laid in the road he will bite the heels of the horses who will throw their riders backwards for your victory trust on the lord gad a troop he shall troop but a troop shall deceive him for asher his food shall be rich and his are the royal pleasures naphtali is a nimble stag has the gift of eloquent speech joseph a fruitful plant a fruitful plant by a well with branches spread on the wall but the master of arrows provoked and shot and pierced him but he turned to his powerful bow and the hands of his arms were quick by the hands of the mighty god of jacob from whom is israel's guardian stone may the god of your father guard you and the almighty bless you with blessings from the sky above with blessings below of dancing water with the bliss of the breasts and love may the blessings of your father strengthen with the bliss of the fertile vales may the wealth of the ancient hills be heaped on the head of joseph more nobly crowned than his brothers benjamin a wolf shall eat plunder at morn and at night shall divide his spoil all the offshoots of israel were twelve and their father said this to them and blessed each with his blessing with blessings adapted to each then he addressed them and said i shall be added to my people bury me with my fathers in the cave which is in the field of ephron the hittite in the cave which is in the field of machpelah which is near mamre in the land of canaan which field abraham bought from ephron the hittite for a place of burial abraham is buried there and sarah his wife isaac is buried there and rebecca his wife and there i buried leah the field was bought and the cave in it from the sons of heth jacob thus finished instructing his sons and stretched out his legs upon the bed and expired and was added to his people chapter 50 then joseph fell upon his father's face and wept and kissed him joseph afterwards ordered his servants the physicians to embalm his father the physicians accordingly embalmed israel when the forty days were completed which the embalming occupies then the mitzorites wept for him yet forty days and at the conclusion of the forty days of mourning joseph addressed the court of pharaoh and said if now i have found favor in your sight speak i request to the ears of pharaoh and say my father made me swear saying when i die bury me in the tomb which i cut out for myself in the land of canaan so now i wish to go up and bury my father and will return pharaoh then replied go up and bury your father as he made you swear joseph therefore went up to bury his father and there went up with him all the ministers of pharaoh the nobles of his court and all the nobles of the land of the mitzraim with all the family of joseph and his brothers and the families of his father and except the sheep and cattle which were left in the land of goshen there also accompanied him chariots and horsemen making a very large army all these marched to goren hatar which is over the jordan and mourned there with a great and very heavy mourning and made a lamentation for his father for seven days and when the inhabitants of the land of canaan saw the lamentation at goren hatar they said this is a great grieving for the mitzrites therefore they called its name mitzer's lament it is beyond the jordan thus his sons did for him as he commanded them so they his sons carried him to the land of canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of machpelah which field abraham bought to be a burial place from ephron the hittite opposite mamre 
Then Joseph returned to Mitzer, himself and his brothers, and all who had accompanied him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. But when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said to one another, Joseph will hate us, and will return upon us all the wrong which we heaped upon him. They therefore sent to Joseph and said, Our father commanded us before he died, Say to Joseph this, Forgive, I pray, your brother's fault and sin in the wrongs they heaped upon you. Consequently we beg of you to forgive the fault of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph, however, wept at their address to him. Then his brothers went and fell before his face and said, We are your slaves. But Joseph replied to them, oh, Fear nothing, for I am subject to God. Although you set upon me for injury, God turned it to good in order that I might make this nation to give life to many peoples. Go now, do not fear me. I will protect you and your children. Thus he comforted them and spoke to their hearts. This was after Joseph returned to Mitzrayim, he and his father's family. And Joseph lived one hundred and twenty years, and Joseph saw his great-grandchildren from Ephraim. Sons also of Machir the son of Manasseh were fondled on the knees of Joseph. At last Joseph said to his relatives, I shall die. However, the ever-living will visit you and take you up from this country to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph administered an oath to the sons of Israel to say, When your God visits you, take up my bones from here. Thus Joseph died a hundred and twenty years old, and they embalmed him, and placed him in a coffin in Mitzrayim. The End of Chapters 43-50 through 50, and The End of the Book of Genesis from the Bible in Modern English Translated by Farrar Fenton Recording by Mark Penfold